With nine million dog owners in Britain today, many of them are battling to be top dog at home. <laughs> Look, you can't go behind me. But one man believes there's no such thing as a naughty dog. I'm not going near it. <laughs> Just struggling owners. Somsie, enough! You think you've got a problem now, and you have. You're really not in control. And that's when master dog trainer Graham Hall steps in to take on the nation's dog owners. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've worked with almost every breed of dog and all kinds of dog behaviour problems, but nine times out of ten, it's the owners that need to change their behaviour, and that is a really tough message to get across. <laughs> The problem I got with you is what you're not doing is any sort of correction at all. With 12 years' experience, Graham's been put to the test thousands of times. Come on, let's run. <laughs> and the results speak for themselves. No. Well done, Vivi. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Honestly, it's, it'll change my life. It's the start of Graham's working week. And before hitting the road, he likes some quality time with Lab Lily. Lily and I have our moments, but, you know, generally she's as good as gold. But you're meant to enjoy your pet. And so often I see people struggling with their dogs. And although my heart goes out to them, I do have to show the owners some tough love. Because if I don't, the worst could happen. Their dog could be rehomed or even worse, put to sleep. In Graham's casebook this week, Paco, a frisky French bulldog from Liverpool... Stop it, Paco. ..with the hots for household appliances. When he gets a hold of it, his tongue's hanging out and he's just absolutely loving life. In Aylesbury, it's sausage dogs at war as Lincoln and Sage threaten to break up a happy home. I don't know what's happened. It's caused them to be so hateful of each other. But first, Stormzy, a delinquent Doberman from Wakefield who seized the reins of power. Ow, it's my finger! Two-year-old Stormzy has a rap sheet a mile long. Calm down. Did I give you that? No. Stormzy. Catherine got Stormzy after a divorce to help daughter Phoebe through a rough patch. I bought him at eight weeks old. Instantly fell in love with him. He's been my baby ever since. Get down! No. But two years on, Catherine's lost all control. Drags me out in the road. I'm scared we're going to get run over by a car. It's all playful on his part, but he's not stopping when I tell him. We're not going till you behave. He's so dangerous on the lead that Catherine has to exercise him in a nearby field. Let go. This doesn't work anymore. Let go. Stormzy, leave it. Stormzy, enough. But getting just a few feet up the road... Let go. ..is a fight for survival. Leave it now. Stormzy. Stormzy, look. Ow. Do you want to go for a walk? This is how we start every walk. And when they get there, the real battle begins. Stormzy, come back. Come here now. I do get quite anxious, cos you just never know what's going to happen. I've got blood on me. I'm not sure if it's from me or the dog. Oh, it's from me. Part the side of my thumb with his tooth. Stormzy, come on now. Adding insult to injury, Stormzy's recall is a canine catastrophe. Oh, sorry, we're trying to work on his recall, but... Come here, Stormzy. Come here. His, his recall's not very good, is it? People are accusing me of owning a dangerous dog. No, come back. Stormzy! I'd just like to walk out the house, you know, just look like a dignified, competent dog owner and not the crazy woman who can't control her doberman. But despite his unruly behaviour, Stormzy's still number one in Catherine's eyes and she panders to his every whim. Sometimes he likes to listen to classical music. It's easier to give in to Stormzy because he sulks and he is like the baby of the family. I've told the kids he is my favourite child. Just like having a little lap dog. But with Catherine about to start teacher training, Stormzy, come back. Stormzy needs a few lessons. Drop it! Oh, uh, the football's kind of got a hole in it. Shh. You'll never notice. My parents are going to look after him, but they're older and not in great health. When they set off to walk him, he's excited. He pulls. And it doesn't help me because I started with sciatica last year. It's the pulling that's the problem, but. 
it'd be easier if we could let him off the lead, but we're not sure if he'll come back. Stormzy! Right, the farmer's going to be really annoyed with us. With Catherine's elderly parents set to take over Doberman daycare in a matter of weeks, Graham's under the clock to get Stormzy on the straight and narrow. Stormzy! You know, Dobermans are quite an interesting breed because they were named after a man called Doberman, Herr Doberman, a German guy. And he, we believe, was either a tax collector or a rent collector, and he needed a protection dog. So he decided that he would design his own. So Dobermans, you might say, were the very first designer dogs. Dobermans were designed to be fearless with strangers. So can Graham rebrand this hooligan hound to become a more docile dog? Hello, I think this is the house. Hello. Oh, yeah, this is definitely the house. Hello. Well, I think he's going to be all right. It's a bit of a judgment call, but um, there's only one way of finding out. Hello, you. Good boy, that's fine. Hello. Hello. Good found morning. your dog. Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Catherine. Nice to meet you, yeah. Come Hello. in. Thank you. Come on, Stormzy. So tell me about Stormzy then. What's going on? Uh, he's got a few behavioural problems, probably because I've spoilt him too much. OK. He's got problems with recall, tugging on the lead, barking up at the fence. Right. He's just the boss. He just won't listen to me calling him back. Two years old, why have you called me now? Because things are changing. I'm starting my teacher training in September. OK. Um, and my mum and dad will be looking after him. I need the dog to behave and be manageable for them, yeah, um, yeah. as well as me. So we should go for a stroll, I think, and yeah. you can show me how it works. Graham needs to see Stormzy at his worst before he can figure out what Catherine's doing wrong. Let's get your harness on. Let go. Stormzy, drop it. Drop your harness. It's just... Come on! Do you get this every time, then? Yeah, pretty much. And if it's not this piece of lead, it'll play tug of war. Right. All right, see if I can get the harness for you. Good luck. No. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Try again. Right, put your harness on. Good boy. Brilliant. There we go. Graham's challenge is to get Stormzy calm enough to be looked after by Catherine's mum and dad. So he's asked for them to come along. So we've got just a few weeks before Catherine starts the teacher training. Yeah. And then it, I'm hearing it's down to grandma and granddad to, Doggy to, 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 to look after him. Yeah. How do you feel about that? It's a good natured dog. It's just that he's excitable and boy, does he take some holding. Yeah, yeah. Straight away, Stormzy shows Graham how much holding he takes. Can you imagine if a car had been coming around the corner then? Within a few hundred yards, Stormzy's setting the pace. But where's Malcolm and Pat? Catherine's racing ahead of her mum and dad who can't keep up, and it's because she doesn't have a choice. I tell you what, we'll head off to the park. If you want to do whatever people do in pubs, yes. and uh, I'm sure that won't be too hard. Right. And I'll, I'll collect you on the way back, we'll have a chat. All right, yes. okay, then. see you in a bit. Should have put my running shoes on. I've got my work cut out, getting Stormzy calm enough so he can be walked by uh, Malcolm and Pat. In fact, I'm struggling to keep up myself. Stormzy's most unmanageable when he's in the park, off lead. So Graham wants to test his recall. We'll head on over that way. Right. There was a man running there. Stormzy! Shout louder, go on, let's better get him. Oh, come on, let's run. Stormzy! I hope he's good with dogs. It's quite clear there's absolutely no control here, is there? Come here! Come Stormzy! On. Come! Coming up, come on. Graham might need to discipline Stormzy, <gasps> but he needs to catch him first. Oh, try and get him back. Stormzy! And Graham faces a challenge he's never seen before, a French bulldog with an unnatural attachment to gadgets. He jumps on it and he really starts going to town on it. <laughs> Across Britain, dog lovers are struggling with their badly behaved pooches. 
master dog trainer Graham Hall believes more often than not, it's the owners who need to learn. Today, Graham's helping Catherine regain control of Stormzy before she starts teacher training, leaving her elderly parents to tackle this disastrous Doberman. Shout louder, go on, let's go again. Right, well then try and get him back. Having finally harnessed this hound, they head to the pub to catch up with Catherine's parents. You hit the nail on the head earlier. You said, oh, I think I've spoiled him. And you're right, uh, you have, without a doubt. You know, he gets whatever he wants. Yeah, he is spoiled. You said that yourself, didn't you? Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that much. <laughs> yeah, well, I think <laughs> there, there is. is. <laughs> yeah, listen to your mother. He's really badly mannered because nobody at home taught him any rules. Because he knows he can do as he likes. Yeah, gets away with murder. You need respect, and you've not got any respect no. off this dog. Stormzy needs to learn that he's not in charge. The person walking him is, he's completely out of control. And there's no way I can work with Catherine's parents until she's able to walk him. Graham's seen how difficult Stormzy is with Catherine, but before he can help, he needs to walk him and work out how deep the issues go. First thing, switching Stormzy's harness for a collar. The harness was here, so he just sticks his chest into it and off he goes, dragging you in circles. Using a collar will give Graham more control. Come on in. Come on, Stormzy. Good boy. Yay. This is what I thought would happen. Stormzy's a nightmare for Catherine, but for me, he's as good as gold. It's a classic case of confidence. Stormzy needs to understand who's in charge, and that's what I need to work on with Catherine. So if the lead's too long, Clearly, you can get too far away from us. So you want a little bit of slack, but not too much. That's about right. So on my walk, I'm saying, right, you, young man, your job is really simple. Whatever I do, you do. So if I walk without even saying a word, he's walking. Wait. To stand any chance of taking control, Catherine will need to keep Stormzy by her side and not let him lead her. So all I'm doing is, every time he starts to get away from me, I'm just letting him know that's naughty. The sound I'm making is ah, or even no, and then he's just getting a little flick back um, on the collar. Now, this isn't a great big bang or yank. We're not trying to hurt him, obviously. What we are doing is going, oi, excuse me, you, listen to me. But after years of dragging mum around town, Stormzy. can Catherine keep Stormzy on the straight and narrow? You're ready to rock and roll. All you need to do is go, and he'll come with you. There you go. Now. So, uh, no. That's it. Now that needs to be a bit faster. A bit on off. Good boy. Ah, Don't no. let him. Right. So if he does that, walk through him if you have to. Bump, bump your way through if necessary. No. So that was quite a long duration. That looked like even him back. Yeah. Short <laughs> no. tug. Yeah. I'm after it. Or you. So in other words, we send out the signal and he brings himself back. Right. What you're doing there is physically oh, right. muscling pulling, him yeah, back. Pulling you know. him back. That's a different picture this morning. I'm really pleased how that's going. We're walking like civilised dog owners. <laughs> nope. This morning, a walk meant risking life and limb for Stormzy and Catherine. Now, under Graham's guidance, teacher-to-be Catherine is starting to discipline her Doberman. She's learning with a quick tug of the lead how to say no for the very first time. No. That's it. Brilliant, because that's you going your no. speed, not his. Storms is responding really well, but being in charge doesn't come naturally to Catherine, and she's got some concerns. I do worry about him sulking and upsetting him, but he seems happy. I think that's the main thing, that you worry that he won't love you anymore if you tell him off. <laughs> well, yeah, I just, I just don't like to see him upset. No, I understand. The truth is, you see, if we get this right, he'll actually be happier, because the walk will be good, but under good control. Yeah. And, of course, the important thing is your mum and dad will be able to do that. Yeah, definitely. Very good. Stormzy has proved that he can be tamed, but only if Catherine can be confident and take charge. But there's a much bigger issue that needs to be tackled before I'll be happy to leave Stormzy with Catherine's parents, and that's his shockingly bad recall. And that can't be fixed in one day. Stormzy! So while Graham leaves Catherine to work on her confidence with lead walking, his next doggy dilemma is a more delicate matter. When Danny got her dream dog, she was hoping she could take him to work. 
Instead, she got a French bulldog who's developed a rather unfortunate habit. He's just too horny, really. He just humps everything. <laughs> <laughs> However, Paco has a particular penchant for hair dryers. As soon as I start trying to blow dry my hair to get ready for work, he'll just go for the hair dryer and hump it. Come on, mate. Knock yourself out. Then I have to dangle the hair dryer, get him to jump on it, let him have his wicked way with it, and then I can get ready for work. For such a small dog, he's got a fierce grip on him. And when he gets hold of it, his tongue's hanging out and he's just absolutely loving life. It's absolutely rapid. I've had three hair dryers so far and he's broke two because he's, he's humped them that hard, he's actually blew a fuse. <laughs> Danny has the one job that makes bringing Paco to work a major problem. I'm a hairdresser. I've tried a couple of times to take him in and I just can't. It's just not very professional, is it, having a French bulldog diving on you and humping the hair dryer while you're trying to blow dry someone's hair? When it comes to gadgets, Paco loves to play the field. If he's not getting hot and heavy with a hairdryer, he'll happily mount the mop. I'm speechless, really. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I think it's very funny. It's a bit bizarre. I don't think Danielle will get many clients so much she, really. If the dog was chasing after the mop or the hairdryer, we'll die. <laughs> Worried her clients might get the hump too, Danny has handed daycare of Paco to her mum. Uh-oh. But there's a problem there, too. No, the Hoover. He jumps on it and he really starts going to town on it. I can't move the Hoover. <laughs> He's just too sexy. He's been like that since about four months and all, which I thought was unnatural. Go on in, you've had your fun. Every time I get the Hoover out, he's like this. And I haven't got that much long to live. <laughs> He's making it shorter every time. Well, of course, I've, I've come across dogs humping before, probably hundreds over the years, and I've seen them hump all sorts of things, but I don't think I've ever seen a case quite like this. Danny, is this? Nice to meet you. Shall I come in? Come in. Thank you. How are you? Well, he's a boy's first lad, isn't he? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the problem? Well, he pumps everything in sight. Right. Tell except, us about... except dogs. Except dogs. Yeah. Right, OK. He's kind of misunderstood how that works, hasn't he? <laughs> Sorts he hump, then. The main thing is hoovers. Mops, hair right. dryers, anything tubular, really. He starts on people's legs now. Right. That, that's a new thing. So it's kind of getting weird. worse and worse. Yeah, oh yeah, it's get, so, definitely getting worse. So hoovers, mops, hair dryers. Yeah, which that's is a, bit a strange random. one. And it's like an attention thing, I think. Right. It's my job, I'm a hairdresser, so uh -huh. it takes me away from them. Right, brilliant. Well, I think I've got my head around the problem. I've heard about it, but you know what? I need to see it. Is there any chance you think he'll do it? Yeah, probably. Oh, I see. He gets a, he's, this is how he gets a grip of it. He really don't, does don't, like that, yeah. doesn't he? Ends up with very bruised shins. I bet you do. <laughs> does he do this every time you try and dry your hair? Yeah, pretty much. You OK? Yeah, have you finished? You're having a breather now, are you? <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to take that off you, because otherwise it's going to be like, can we go again? <laughs> you OK? So how many times a day would he do that? Every time he sees it. Really? Yeah. And then you've got the hoover as well, and then you've got the mop. I have to say, that's pretty impressive in one level. Yeah, he's got stamina. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, hair salon, you've got to have a brush and a mop to sweep. You must be sweeping the floor all the time. Right? Yeah. Have you got a mop here? Yeah, there's well, one, I'll get one. You, yeah, have, let's you, have you a don't have to even really be using it, you'll just jump on it anyway. OK. So. <laughs> That was like as soon as the mop came out, wasn't it? It was like, mop, hello. <laughs> it's not as if he's got a big bushy tail he could help him off, is it? <laughs> so 
he starts humping things and everybody around him laughs and smiles and thinks it's hilarious, which it is. The problem, of course, is that he sees that and then thinks, oh, oh, you like this? Right, I'll do more of this. Right, OK. <laughs> I think I've got the general idea. <laughs> Danny needs to understand that it's OK to tell dogs off as long as you do it in the right way. We all need to learn what's right and what's wrong. And frankly, humping hair dryers, it's wrong. But will Graham be able to persuade Paco to part ways? He really does like that, doesn't he? With his beloved blow dryer. And Graham finds himself caught in the crossfire between two sparring sausage dogs locked in a bitter battle. Hey. Dog trainer Graham Hall spends his life coming to the rescue of desperate dog owners. Today, he's helping Danny with her French bulldog's larger-than-life libido. Humping's actually quite common at this age for lots of puppies, and it's usually driven by, you know, let's say, teenage hormones, but it can be triggered by stress or it could be just plain attention-seeking. But the way to resolve humping, more often than not, is about changing the way owners react to it. It is funny, and I'm really struggling to keep a straight face, but keeping a straight face is the way forward here. To start with, I'm, I'm going to be working on your body language because while he's being naughty, you're not allowed to smile or laugh. That's what I do. So it was... Well, I get that, but you're going to have to change your way of doing it, otherwise we'll never fix this. What I've not seen you doing at all is, is any sort of discipline. But you need to know the right method because I don't want him to be scared to death, but I do need him to look at you and think, yeah, right, she means it. So I'll show you how to do that. Yeah. To get Paco to give humping the heave-ho, Graham starts with the mop. So, here's that um, particularly attractive mop. Now, at the moment, I'm holding it up out of the way so he's not doing anything about it, but I think if I just sort of put it there and moved it about, yeah, straight away, even with me, look, no different. <laughs> Off he goes, you know? Now, let me have my mop back. Come here, you. <laughs> what I'm going to do is put it down, if he goes for it, I'm going to step between me and him. I'm going to use a new command, off, yeah? And the face that goes with it is very much the naughty. So he needs to understand that it's unacceptable to do that. And I'm not waiting for him to get into full swing. So I'm putting it down in position. If he goes for it, ah, off. Good boy. I'm saying good boy because he's doing nothing. Yeah. So the signal's really clear. If he goes for it, ah, off. <laughs> no, it says oh. Yeah, so if he goes for it now, ah, off. Good boy. Using a leg block, a command, ah. and some well-timed praise, it's only taken five minutes for Paco to learn that mop mounting is off the menu. Good boy. Because occasionally I'm taking the time to tell him what actually I do want from him. Yeah. And if I need him to move, I can just use a bit. Good boy. Well, we'll mop this bit. Having stifled Paco's passion, Graham's upping the ante. Now he wants Danny to tackle his hairdryer humping. Ah. Uh. You could lower that into position, and when he goes for it, you need to swing your leg round. Off. And again. Off. And now. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. Now look at you. You're just teasing him now. You're swinging <laughs> that around. Bless him. And he's walked away. Off. Off. That's it. Then wait Good for boy. it. Good boy. Good boy. Even with temptation boy, staring him in the face, Paco resists oh. the urge to make his signature move. Good boy. He's a clever boy. Good boy. His reward is a well-earned tummy tickle from Mum. That's like a new dog. Good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I made it up. It's just so nice to have a, a normal dog. Paco might be a new pooch at home, but can he keep a lid on his libido in the one place that really sets him off? That only leaves one thing, really. You know the salon of yours? Yeah. We should go there and really test this, shouldn't we? 
Yeah, see how he gets on there. Until her puppy proves he can control his sex drive in the salon, Danny can't risk bringing him to work. But with mops, hair dryers, and clients' legs on offer, will Paco be able to contain his passion? This is Gail. Nice to meet you. Hi. All right. To dampen his desires, Graham's brought along a distraction. Paco needs to learn while a little ball play is allowed, humping in the hair salon is a definite no-no. I don't want to tease him too much, but while I'm here, why yeah. don't you really show him that hair and see what he does? Do you know what? I think we fixed the problem. Because he's looking at it yeah, now. Yeah, he's not interested now, is he? No, he isn't. Look at his line there. No. <laughs> yeah. What do you make of that? It's good, because normally when he comes near, this is where he's his most naughty. Yeah. He has to pump everything. You don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming in, love, and I will see you soon. Bye, Paco. <laughs> see you later. Bye. 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 Thank you. In less than 24 hours, Paco's gone from an embarrassment to a perfect pooch. Good boy. Do you know, I, I think he's just going to be a lovely dog around the salon. I think people are really going to enjoy him being here, and so are you. It'd be nice to meet you, young man. Uh, I'm going to hit the road. It's so, been lovely to meet you, Graham. Thanks yeah, you so too. Much. Take care Thank now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye. That means I can bring him to work now and not have to palm him off with my mum and dad all the time and take him to doggy daycare. He can just come in here and chill out. Oh, bless you. It's a new day, and Graham's heading south for his next job. His next appointment is with Dueling Dachshunds, whose relationship has hit rock bottom. Dachshunds were, were dogs that were bred to hunt badgers, and they're pretty feisty. So when Dachshunds do get aggressive, it's not handbags at dawn. They really mean it, and they can go in for the kill. <laughs> For the last few weeks, Lincoln and Sage have been locked in a war. It's heartbreaking because they, you literally can't believe that this is happening. Two dogs that know each other, that have lived together for over a year, and then for this to happen, it's like, what, why? What's, what's mm. gone on? They used to share the bed together, snuggle up little sausages side by side, sleep on top of each other. But Sage used to even suck his ears. But now, you can't even get them in the same room together. The problem began after Claire split from her partner. She and the dogs moved 80 miles to be near her mum. For a few weeks, all was calm. We watched a lot of daytime TV together. They kept me company in hard times because it would have been quite hard coming back here and just sitting in a house on your own. But as soon as Claire went back to work, her babies became mortal enemies. What started out as snarls over food soon erupted into a full-on feud. Claire had to take drastic action. I said to Mum, can you take Sage and look after him for a bit? Well, that evening I, I cried so much because I was now without him and I was thinking, I, I actually thought, this is, I don't think this is going to get any better and I don't think I'm going to be able to have them back together. Despite endless efforts to reunite them over the last nine weeks, neither of these tiny terrors will back down. I think they're like best buddies and that's what really upsets me because I don't know what's happened. It's caused them to be so, so hateful of each other. If I can't resolve this issue between them, then Claire is going to have to choose between one of her lovely dogs. And, and, you know, how do you do that? So, the pressure's on. With current living arrangements only a short-term fix, Claire's desperate for Graham to repair her Daxon's disastrous relationship and heal her broken heart. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, Hello. Claire. Hi, Claire. I'm Graham. Come on in. And I'll be Lincoln then. This is Lincoln, oh, yes. Uh, come on. <laughs> so, tell me about the problem then, Claire. How bad has it got? Um, well, they've um, got to the point where Sage has actually bitten Lincoln. Mm. Um, I've been bitten. My mum's been bitten. So whenever I go anywhere near Lincoln, touch him, even take his harness off, anything uh, like that, right. Sage will get very jealous and then launch at him. I'll get quite upset about it because they are meant to 
They're meant to be brothers and, and to see them not getting on is quite upsetting. So what changed? Unfortunately, a relationship breakup, and then had to sell the house yeah. and that wow. sort of thing. So. You know, going through a breakup and moving house are two of the most stressful things that a person can go through. And, and dogs are highly intuitive. So I think that, you know, the stress that Claire's been under has probably triggered this. Since their fallout, Lincoln has been living with Claire and Sage has been staying with her mum. Graham will need to bring the two dogs together to solve the problem. Under his watchful eye, mum Angela brings Sage into the room. The sofa is the biggest battleground for these feuding friends. Sage has become fiercely jealous of Lincoln snuggling up with Mum. Hey, 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 is that Lincoln? Yeah, he's died at this time. Get ready, Mum. <laughs> with her canines clashing, Claire tries to comfort Lincoln. Good boy. So Sage actually has given up first. Yeah, it's really interesting this to me because when Sage does start to get a little bit tense, Lincoln actually isn't looking nervous to me. He, he's not looking that bad, but you are. Oh. I think you're transferring your feelings and your thoughts onto Lincoln. Oh. Initially when Sage came in, Claire sat down with Lincoln. A few seconds, it was fine. And then it was all, holy hell let loose, really. Teeth and all the rest of it. But interestingly, Three minutes later, two, three minutes later, they'd calm down. You see, dogs are really quite good at not holding a grudge, unless humans intervene and get it wrong. And in this case, that's exactly what's happening. Rather than let the dogs get it out of their system, Graham believes Claire is getting involved too soon and fueling the feud. <laughs> this time, he wants her to hold her nerve and not pick Lincoln up when she gets both of them on the sofa. Good boy. So how are you feeling right now? I'm nervous now. Okay. This is, um, it's uh, close. It is. It's quite close now. So you need to make sure the lead's shortish, yep. but not pulling on them tight. If they start to grumble, don't allow it to escalate, remember. Yeah. But other than that, let's just go for it. So, uh, so if you want to call, call him up. As Sage heads up the ramp to face his rival, Claire needs to stay calm and resist the urge to comfort Lincoln. Now watch him. That's it. Good boys. That's it. Staring. Now keep an eye on both yes. of them if you can. Oi, no. Hey. But it's not as straightforward as Graham had hoped. Wait, wait, this time. Look calm down. This time Claire holds back in the hope they will calm themselves. Good, Good boy. boy. That's better. Good boy. Just calmly though, slowly. That's it. Good boy. When they get themselves into that excited state, it's no, there's not much point screaming and shouting at them. You'll just fuel the fire. Yeah. So we've just got to wait for it. Again, that took about two minutes. These dogs will settle by themselves, but we need to nip that initial aggression in the bud. And Claire needs to do that. She needs to show them that when things get heated, it's not acceptable. So the next time the dogs kick off, he wants Claire to calmly stand up and get between them. Good boy. Hey, no. So put yourself in the way. Oi. No. That's it. Well done. No. With Claire's body language showing no. her dogs their behaviour is not acceptable, it's not long before the message right. sinks in. And remarkably, just minutes after being at his brother's throat, Sage makes his way up the ramp. Why oh, would you look at that? So, Can you believe it? <laughs> to Claire's amazement, Sage settles down, and for the first time in weeks, her warring sausage dogs agree to share the sofa. How does it feel to be in this position now? This is the closest <laughs> I've ever got them in months. months so and months. it's a great feeling that it's. It's got to this point, so yeah. it's good. We've done a lot. I mean, I, I didn't know whether we get this far today. I'm really pleased about that. They will, occasionally, still have a pop at each other. And it's a case of using your body to block, telling them confidently no, and overall just giving them time and waiting for them to come down. And always quit while you're ahead.
Claire doesn't just look more confident, she really is more confident, and dogs pick up on that. I came here to find a broken home. Two dogs live in a park, but I'm confident that Claire, Lincoln and Sage can be in this same space, and this, once again, can become a happy family home. Graham may have saved Lincoln and Sage's relationship, but in Wakefield, there is still work to be done to put an end to Doberman Stormzy's runaway antics. Shout loud, everyone. Stormzy, come here! Come on, let's run. Graham's working week is coming to a close, and he's out with his dog Lily before hitting the road. His final task is to get Doberman Stormzy calm enough to be walked by his owner Catherine's mum and dad before she starts teacher training. Stormzy, enough! So it's back to school for both Catherine and Stormzy. Oh, come on, let's run. Stormzy! I hope he's good with dogs. On his last trip, Stormzy's recall was so bad in an open field, Graham's decided to train him in a controlled environment. This way, oi! And where better to meet than the local school hall? No. Oh, that looks good. That's a lot better than it started off the other day. Great. Hey, you look good. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you again. Good morning. So, you've been practicing? We have, we have. It looks practicing. like it as well. Yeah. So, let's start the lesson, shall we? Yeah, let's go. Come on then. Come on, then. Come on Stormzy. Good boy. Ah. Before Stormzy's schooling begins, the first step is to decide on a clear recall command. I think his name's a good start. So normally I would recommend either Stormzy come or Stormzy here, whichever you prefer. Yeah. So my voice, in order to get this to work, needs to be really bright and clear. The command needs to be the same every time. In this case, yeah. Stormzy, yeah. In order to make Stormzy understand exactly what's expected of him when his name is called, yeah. Graham is using a 20 meter training lead. Stormzy, here! By calling his name and giving a sharp flick of the lead, Stormzy returns to Graham, who rewards his efforts with a treat. Stormzy, here! Yay! Brilliant. There you go. Listen, I might sound a bit silly, but I don't care if the dog's coming back. With Stormzy a star pupil, Graham's keen to see if Catherine can call him to her. So, right, any time you're ready. Stormzy, here? But Stormzy doesn't respond, and Graham thinks he knows why. So when I did it, it's Stormzy, here? Like that, there you go. When you do it, it's a bit more Stormzy, here. Yeah. It's nice, <laughs> but it's a bit subdued. <laughs> so let's turn the volume up and turn up the bright excitement, you know? So we'll do it again, so nice and bright. Stormzy, here! Great, look Good at that. Good boy, come on. Good boy. That's it. Stormzy, here! Go on, go, Good go, boy. go. Come on. Super Good excited, boy. go there on. There you go. Stormzy, here! Brilliant. Good boy. With her confidence growing, Catherine finds her voice. But in the park, Stormzy won't be on a long training lead. So can Catherine get him back using only her voice? Stormzy, who's a good lad? Hello. Right, call him when you're ready, Catherine. Stormzy, here! Look at that. Good boy. Good boy. Fantastic. A few days ago, Stormzy's recall Stormzy. was non-existent. Yeah. Now, for the first time ever, Catherine has him off the lead and returning to Stormzy, her command. Here. Look at that, lad. Good Hand boy. Right there. Good boy. He's coming back every time Good then. Good boy. So I knew we'd make progress, but I didn't really in my wildest dreams think that we would have him off lead and responding like that to Mum's command. Great. Let's go meet your yep. mum and dad. Off we go. I'm really pleased and I think he's made good progress. He's probably done better than I expected, really. I didn't think he'd do this well so quickly. So I guess I should have believed in him a bit more. <laughs> yep. With Catherine's recall skills needing time to develop, the last major hurdle will be to put Stormzy's schooling into practice with her parents. But the last time they saw Stormzy on a walk, he was out of control, dragging Catherine all over the place. 
Now it's their turn to take the reins. Come on, then, Storms. For Catherine, the stakes are high. If her father can't take over walking duties, her plans to start teacher training could be in serious jeopardy. Rather than me teach you how to do it, I think we should get the trainee teacher here to teach you. And if she can pull off teaching you guys, I think she could teach anybody, really, because teaching your mum and dad's not easy. <laughs> no, definitely not. Wrap the lead around your hand and you need a loose loop, um, like um, a J, like that, and your arm down by your side. And if he does pull, then you need to say, oi, no, and a flick on the lead to bring him back. Right. Good boy. Well, Malcolm was taking control. He's been drilled by his daughter. <laughs> Quite funny to watch that, really. I've got Malcolm walking with the stick with a Doberman who, not so very long ago, would have had him completely off his feet. And actually, I'm sitting here talking to you, and I'm not really feeling the need to rush around there any minute because there's an emergency. I think we're on the right track. And then it's just a little flick. Um, rather than a, a long pull, that's what I've been doing too. Yeah, you mustn't have a tense lead. That's very good though. Did you think we could get to this stage with your dad walking with his stick and, and Stormzy when we first met? This is a huge improvement. He's, he's far calmer and he's, he's paying more attention. There's no doubt about that. It's a milestone moment for Catherine. Less than a week ago, Stormzy couldn't be trusted on the lead. Now Catherine's taught her father how to safely walk her once defiant Doberman. Yeah, my dad seems to be doing really well. It's like proud mummy moment, watching uh, my baby walk so nicely up and down the road. And if we keep on with that, um, I'm sure it'll be perfect within a few weeks. It'll, it'll be the dog I've always hoped it would be. But I do feel a lot happier knowing that he's not going to hurt my mum and dad by pulling. Malcolm's doing really well, and that's great news, because if I hadn't been able to get them walking together, it would have been a nightmare for Catherine with her new career. But I'm happy to leave them, safe in the knowledge that Stormzy is a perfect pupil. Catherine started teacher training, and Stormzy has stayed top of the class for Dad Malcolm. In Liverpool, Paco has become the perfect salon pet. And for Lincoln and Sage, they are both back at home with Mum. Oh. Next time... The dog comes over, I can hide behind a bush. A Ridgeback boxer cross from Chester Leave. that's always looking for a fight. This is getting worse, and I'm just really concerned. <laughs> In Dorset, a miniature pincher that has a big bite. Off. <laughs> And Prince, a rebellious retriever with a hair-raising snatching habit. Obviously, if I'm on phone to a customer, that's not a good thing to do.